Welcome to the InfoMullet YouTube channel. If you enjoy this content, please like or share. And if you'd like to support the InfoMullet by becoming a mulleteer, visit us on Patreon. We appreciate your support. Let's talk now about safety. Speaking of which, um, the rule since day one or day 30 or day whenever Trump got around to saying it has been six feet social distance. And like so much of this virus, we had, it was a novel virus. We're learning as we go. And that's not really a good way to think about safety. So what I want to do now is switch from analysis of charts and data and states to think about how do people individually get infected and how does that affect how your own behavior is and what practices you either support or advocate or put in place for your grocers, businesses. And the bedrock of these assumptions has been six fit. It's been distance. The problem with that is it doesn't really reflect what we now know about the virus. And there's been a lot of good research recently that have taken actual cases. And so let's think about how you get infected and put it in discrete terms. Um, SARS-CoV-2, uh, those particles, it's estimated by several research that it takes about a thousand of those particles to spark an infection. So think of these now as a thousand units of virus, a thousand particles of virus. The trick is it's a thousand. If you take in a hundred particles over 10 breaths, or you take in 10 particles over a hundred breaths, you're still hitting a thousand. So this is why they say the formula to keep in mind, it's simple formula. A successful infection is exposure to virus multiplied by time. And it's that time piece that's missing, right? So distance is not an equation in there. It's exposure over duration, exposure multiplied by time. So if it takes a thousand particles to get infected, let's go through what some common things are. There's a cough. Um, a single cough releases about 3,000 droplets normally. It travels about 50 miles an hour. A lot of them will drop but some of them will stay in the air for a few minutes and can across a room in a few seconds. Um, a sneeze may have 30,000 droplets and they're traveling at 200 miles per hour. Um, again, a lot of them will fall. Some of them will stay in the air for a few minutes. If you are infected though, the way the virus transmits is the virus knows, hey, sneeze and coughs are good for passing it along. That's why it, 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 it takes advantage of our immune system. A sneeze or a cough by an infected person may have 200 million particles in it right? So you're talking uh, almost 100 million or 10 million more than a normal cough or sneeze. And these get dispersed around in the environment that you're in. And they begin to fill up um, the room you're in with these particles. Now, it won't last forever. Oh, a breath, uh, people ask, what's a single breath, right? If you're just breathing normally, that may be 50 to 5,000 droplets, depending on how heavy your breathing is. Most of those are low velocity. They're not going to go far and they fall to the ground. So if you think about general breathing, um, you would, it would take, if you're standing with just someone general breathing in a very shallow way, and even if every virus ends up in your lung, like say there's 20 viral particles per breath that they're breathing, every one of those ends up in your lung, it might take 50 minutes. It's a long duration of time. But if they're speaking, that increases the viral expulsion rate by tenfold. There's about 200 virus particles a minute. Now you're in a room with someone who's talking, it may take five minutes of face-to-face -face speaking time to receive the required dose to become infected. So this, this exposure over time is why certain guidelines say things like gyms need to stay closed. Think about a gym. You're working out heavy, you're breathing heavy, you're exerting. Those viruses are going to expel at a faster rate and they're going to fill the room up. And you're in that room for an extended period of time. You know, people are in there working out for a half hour, hour. That's a lot of time to fill the room. And the problem with the six foot social distance rule is it makes us think that we're safe if I can see someone and I see that I'm distant. But think about that gym, right? You walk into a gym and it's empty. Did someone leave after working out for an hour, five minutes before you got there and this room is now full of particles? Has it been empty for two hours, three hours, five hours? And I'm just picking on gyms here, but same with daycare centers, same with any enclosed area. Um, it's about exposure over time. And the more people that are in that area, it, you could have a social distancing friendly, like under 10 people. Well, if you have under 10 people in a small room for four hours, guess what? They're all going to be exposed to one another by the end of that, unless they're taking proper precautions. This is why the CDC is basically saying if you spend greater than 10 minutes within face-to-face -face situation, you're potentially infected. And if you're spending hours in a place, even if there's few people, that's a potential infection vector as well. And this, is, this should guide 
I think, better safety practices. Now, I've linked the articles that this comes from down below in this sort of, the, there's a safety heading, and I've linked the research this comes from, so you can look it up on your own. But when you think about your own safe practices, even if you're outside at a picnic, right, people are going outside, they're enjoying it, I get it, you need to have that mental relief. But don't think that because you're outside, you're safe. If you're standing in a small group of people that are near each other and you're all chatting for 10 minutes, guess what? That virus is getting, an, it's, it's not going to expand infinitely across the entire globe, but in that local area outside you are, there's enough virus to create. But if you're just walking down the street and someone passes you the other way and it's like, hi, hi, it's a couple seconds. There's really, this is how we get smart about thinking about safety is that it's not just a simple thing as like, there's someone and how far I am. It's, it's about how much time you have that exposure. And again, this is without masks on. The benefit of masks, they're not perfect, but they reduce that viral intake. They reduce the amount of particles depending on the quality of the mask. A cloth mask is not gonna reduce it nearly as well as an N95, but it should provide some measure of protection while you're in these circumstances. But if you're wearing a mask that's cloth and you're in an area for two hours and it's a room and people are talking, eh, probably not gonna be sufficient. So keep these in mind when you talk, think about safety practices, personal practices, how you advocate for, if, if schools reopen, think about all those kids. They're gonna breathe, they're gonna run around, shout, scream. Uh, choirs, bands, anything that's live theater, you have heavy escalation of voice, even call centers, right? You could be socially distanced in a call center, but you have people talking constantly in an enclosed room. How do you work the circulation there and make sure that those people who are on an eight hour shift talking constantly aren't spreading viruses out everywhere that gradually fill the room? Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to follow the InfoMullet, visit us on Facebook or Twitter. And if you'd like notifications when we post new video content, click on the red subscribe button below the video. If you've ever wanted to become a mulleteer and support the InfoMullet, visit us on Patreon. We appreciate the support.